congratulations. Thank you. What went through your mind when you found out you won? Uh, man, just happy. Um, a lot of sacrifice this year, a lot of hard work building up to this year. Um, a lot of just like excitement, anticipation, not for the award, but for this season. And, um, you know, this team, this group of guys, this organization has been what I thought it would be and, and what I wanted it to be. Um, so, um, you know, I'm in a really good situation. Uh, this team, this organization, my, my teammates have been, uh, you know, the biggest part of the reason why I won that award. So. Um, it's a team award, man. Everybody's sacrificing. We all have, a, I think, a bigger goal in mind, but this is recognition for me and for the group. Were there any points this season where you were unsure? Unsure of? The role that you were playing on this team. Of course. Um, I'd be lying and saying if, uh, if, I, if I didn't admit that. I, for sure, I think, you know, they're, they're ups and downs. And any role you play in the NBA, whether you're the main guy, a bench player, there are doubts. Um, there are times where you don't score as much or you don't have as much impact, you don't play as much, um, or the team loses and, you, you know, you have doubts. But um, this team's resilient. I've been resilient. Um, the coaching staff has been resilient. It's just, a, I think, a group full of winners. We, we have high expectations for ourselves. We're hard on ourselves, but also we, we come out and we, uh, you know, I think we play at a high level most nights because of that expectation so high. You mentioned last night during the broadcast about how you kind of had a realization maybe you're not a number one in, in the NBA. What was that kind of, how did that kind of thought process come about and how did you reset to sit, like embracing these other roles? Yeah, you know, I went, to, I went from Milwaukee where I was basically a fourth or fifth option to Indiana where I was a one and two, depending on the night. Um, and, you know, we were a good team, especially my first year. Um, a four seed, five seed, but, you know, the years after that weren't, and it, not all because I wasn't a number one option, but we weren't a great team. We, you know, th those weren't winning years. Um, and for me, I had to look at myself and, and figure out what can I do more going forward, whether I'm with the, this or the organization with the Pacers or I'm with someone else, you know, what will my role look like? Where do I need to be? What, what role do I need to play on a really good team? Because um, I knew at that point after Indiana, I wanted to be on a really good team. Um, and it's just, it's an ego check and, and also understanding who you are. I think that's the best thing you can do in this league, um, especially as a young guy, but even as a vet, understand who you are and what you bring to any team. Um, and you'll, you'll most likely be in a good position. What is the toughest part about transitioning to that bench role? Um, I think just less opportunity. Um, it, really that simple. Um, it's not like your role changes in terms of what you do on the floor, or how you play, it's really, you're playing with less minutes. You're playing with the ball less. Um, and, you know, on a team like this, you have five excellent starters, um, which, you know, you're on the floor with usually three of them at a time. So uh, just less opportunity. So you have to maximize your opportunity as best you can. Joe gave you a lot of credit for how you adjusted to the defense this year. What was that process like for you, especially with all the switching that they do here? It was tough. I've always been a good one-on-one -on -one defender. Um, uh, I've always been a good defender in the post against bigger, bigger guards and bigs. Uh, but I think the schemes, um, the way this team switches, just sort of. There's a lot of stuff with these with these guys have been playing. Marcus, JT, Smart, Al. They've been playing together for years. There's a lot of unspoken rules and understandings on when they're going to switch, uh, when they're going to stay with their man. Um, a lot of it's just not spoken, and for me, it's, it's been a learning process having to pick that up on the fly and, and adjust to it. And those guys have been, you know, patient with me because I've had a lot of breakdowns just trying to figure out the, the schemes and the defense. But they've been they've been great for me. Now, being from here, is there more in you and Jalen? Is there more of a tie to the city? I mean, did you grow up a Hawks fan? Did you follow, or were you more of an NBA guy? Like it seems like the guys that are from here are more tied to the city as a baby close to the franchise. Yeah, stuff. man, it's it's definitely for me. I can't speak for these guys, but for me, it's been I'm tied to the city. I love Atlanta. Like this is home. This will always be home. I'll always have some type of house or, or you know tying here. But um, as far as the franchise, no. I mean, uh, historically, these fans haven't been the most dedicated. So, uh, and that's myself included coming up. So, um, you know, I was I was always an NBA fan, but not Hawks specifically. The, you talked about the role, the toll it takes on your body less as well. How are you feeling going into these playoffs, and is it relative to years in the past? I feel amazing. Um, I've never felt amazing going to the playoffs. I've been to the playoffs 
Uh, five years in a row, I've never felt fresh, or not five years in a row, five years out of my career, I've never felt fresh. I feel fresh right now. And that's a testament to how they've played me, how they've managed my loads, um, and, uh, you know, just the maintenance. They, they and I have taken care of my body on a different level this season, and I feel completely fresh, which is, which is a blessing. And then going into game three, historically one of the toughest in like, the best of seven, what are you expecting? Their, their best shot, you know. Uh, I imagine uh, putting myself in their shoes. This is a game. This is the game they think if we win tonight, we, we can stay alive in the series. Um, and if they don't, they know it's basically over. You know, that's just sort of the reality of game of when you're down 2-0. Um, so this is a game they're going to come out and make a real push. This is a good team we're playing. They score the ball, top 10 scoring team in the league. So we respect this team. We know they're good. Um, so we have to come out in the first four minutes, the first quarter, and really, uh, you know, send a message. Thank you.